good morning. Good to see you. Glad you're here today. We have any first time visitors? Would you put your hand up, please? We'll give you a visitor's packet. Anybody at all? First time you've been here? I guess not. I guess every, either, either it's your first time and you're lying about it, <laughs> or it's your first time and you're not going to tell nobody about it. But we're glad you're here, each and every one of you. Appreciate you being here with us this morning. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, thank you for the day. We ask you to bless our service today. I pray that you speak to our hearts and encourage our lives. And Lord God, most of all, if there's one that's come today that's never trusted Christ as their personal Savior, we pray that this will be the day they repent of their sin and ask Jesus to be the Savior of their soul. And Father, I pray for many of our church that are sick, but I uh, pray especially for Keith Long today. And uh, God, just touch him as only you can. And uh, we'll just continue to lift him up to you. Bless our music today. Be an encouragement to all of us. May it stir our hearts. The preaching of God's word, the time of invitation, and then the partaking of the Lord's table. And Father, we just ask you to bless all that we do here this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen and amen. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand, turn to 43, nothing but the blood, number 43. Don't forget the, the security team meeting right after the service. Uh, meet, meet probably right up here. And that's for all members of the team or anybody who would like to join the team as well right after the service. Um, ladies Bible study tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. Gift card orders are due today. Fourth quarter reports are due now as well. So if you haven't got those in, please do so. Uh, still need um, nursery workers and children's church workers. So. You can help out with that, see Miss Peggy or, or Miss Kelly. And um, got a couple other announcements as well. Uh, Gail did put the list back in the uh, snap sheet back in the vestibule. So if you want to join the choir or sing a special, please sign up and there will be choir practice at five tonight. So uh, if you want to join the choir, just come on out to practice. Um, home uh, COVID test. Uh, Brother David, um, 
Farley has, has been able to get, uh, I think, about 45 of these as currently has back to pastor's office, and he thinks he might be able to get more. So after church, as you go out, uh, if, you, if you'd like to have uh, some of these, just uh, grab them from him on your way out, or he may have them set back there on the table. I'm not sure what he's going to do, but uh, feel free to grab those as you leave today. And, and if we need to get more, uh, he thinks he thinks he might be able to get more. Not 100% sure, but thinks he thinks he can. And um, ladies' outing. And um, Peggy's not here today, but Miss Phyllis said uh, any any lady. It's not uh, not a certain age group or anything. So uh, it's going to be on Friday at Denny's in Salem. And if you live in in that area and just want to meet there at nine, you can. If you live up this way and want to ride the van, meet here at 8:30 at the church to go to Denny's to meet at nine on Friday. And uh, Brother Tim has a hospital bed uh, that uh, he would like to uh, give to someone if somebody needs it. So if you have a need for a hospital bed, see Brother Tim. Anything else? Any other announcements? All right, if you've had a birthday or anniversary this past week, come forward this time. Happy birthday to you. Time for our choir special.
children are dismissed, ages three through nine. Three through nine. Everybody please stand for our dox doxology. <clears throat> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. For the David's blessing.
bless the offering. Our blessed Heavenly Father, just thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to come into your house and worship and praise you, Lord. We just ask that you might just bless the pastor today as he delivers the message, Lord. And just, if there's somebody here that hasn't accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, I just pray that today will be the day they will accept Jesus to come into their life. Just bless the young people back in the children's church, Lord, and that they might accept Jesus Christ too. Just bless this offering we're about ready to receive. I pray that we use it for all your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Miss Cherie has our special.
you're not alone. Jesus is with you. He said he always would abide. Just Amen. Revelation chapter 5. Aren't you happy this morning that the Bible says that he will never leave us nor forsake us? Man, I like what the psalmist said. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I'm glad to be here this morning. Amen. About six of us are glad to be here. I don't know what the rest of you are doing, but anyhow, we are happy to be in the house of God. Miss Cherie, thank you so much for that song. And uh, I know Miss Gwen thoroughly enjoyed that. And uh, you all pray for her, and I, as I know you do. And uh, I still have to mention her all the time. And because uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like you all, I want her to be healed. I want God to heal her. And uh, I miss her being here with me. It's been, uh, we've been in the ministry for 43 years together. We've been married 55 years, and I've never come to church unless she was sick without her being here with me. So for the last nine weeks, it's been kind of difficult when I look down here, 
and uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have to get uh, David and Tree to move up on the front row. So if I look, I'll just think maybe that, is that Gwen or is that Tree? And then I'll know I can keep on going. But I do miss her immensely. And uh, you all, I know you all understand that as best you can. But when you've been together and, and been in the ministry for that many years and always looking down, I, I miss all of her hand signals. And... Uh, I thank God she's not doing those right now. She may be doing them at home. I have no idea. But stand with me. Revelation chapter number five. Verse number one. I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Who's worthy to open the book? And to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. One of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld and said, Lo, and, and lo, in the midst of the throne uh, and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials, Full of the odors which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang it and they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by, blood, by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made unto us, un, us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. I like verse number nine, that new song they're singing. He says, that Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Verse 11, And I beheld and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beasts and the elders and the number of them. I want us to notice this number was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them. Heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. And this old preacher just happens to have to say amen on that portion of scripture right there. And uh, I thank the God for that. It's just been in, inspiring to me this week. Father, thank you for a great day. Thank you, Lord, already for what you've blessed us with and the songs that have been sung. And, uh, Lord, how they, they've just... Everything that's been done has just met the needs of our lives here today, especially mine. Thank you for the precious words of the songs that were sung and how they spoke to my heart. Father, I, I just want to thank you this morning for the precious word of God that I have here in front of me, that I'm able to read it and I'm able to love it. But most of all, Father, to love the one who's the author of it the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I just, I thank you, Father, for all that's written herein about him who died on the cross for my sin, rose again, ascended back, and he's at the throne of God right now at your right hand. And Lord, we're looking at something this morning that's yet future. But I, I tell you, Father, when I read about it, I get excited because I know I'm going to be there. And I rejoice in the fact that one day we'll look all over heaven for him and he'll show up just like he always does and he'll show up right in the midst of everything. So God bless us and help us today. 
save that one that's sitting here in this building this morning that's lost without Christ and one breath away from hell. I pray you'd touch them in a special way that they would repent and see, receive Christ as Savior. I pray for every Christian this morning. God, may we realize that one day we are going to enjoy ourselves beyond all measure when we worship and praise the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So thank you, Lord, this morning already for what you've done. It's what you've done in my heart already. I just want to praise you and say I love you more than I've ever loved you before. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I, I guess back last year, uh, I, I preached a couple of messages on the midst of Jesus in the midst of our struggles and in the midst of the church. And what have we to fear or dread as long as Jesus is right in the midst? I, we shouldn't fear anything. There should be no dread in our lives. This is, as I, I told, I've told you, and I prayed about a time that's future. And John has, offered, has the opportunity to, to record the events taking place around the throne of God. Can you imagine that? John was in the spirit back in chapter number four. And he went to heaven, and now he's around the throne of God. And under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he's writing these things down as they're told to him. And uh, I think he might have felt like an Old Testament high priest with the privilege of going behind the veil into the presence of God. John stood in the very presence of the glorified Christ. And I, I can't imagine, I, I tell you what I say, I can't imagine now, but I say, bless God, I'll imagine it, that I'll know it the day that it happens because I won't be walking by faith. I'll be looking by sight and I'll be watching what's going on in chapter 5. And can I tell you something? I'm going to be one of them thousands, times ten thousands, times thousands, and thousands and thousands. And this old fat Baptist preacher is going to be right in the middle of the whole bunch. I'm going to be singing and rejoicing in the goodness of God. I, I'm going to say like the angel said, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Holy, holy as they cried out the name of the Lord Jesus. For I tell you, it's going to be some. When I start thinking about things like this, I just kind of get a little excited because I'm going to be there. And the reason I'm going to be there is because I've been saved by the grace of God and I've been washed in the precious blood of the Lamb. And I'm one of His and have been one of His for a long time. And I plan on taking my place when I get to heaven and rejoicing. I, I tell you, when you read this, this is the kind of, of record that you read that should bring comfort to our hearts and rejoicing in our lives because of the day we got saved by the grace of God. We are going to experience this right here because we will be with our risen Lord. A somber moment. I, you know, we read those verses. I'm not going to read them again. But look at verse number four. There's a somber moment here. Verse one, one and two. There's a question asked. It says, and I saw on the right hand of him, verse one, that sat upon the throne, a book written and on the, and a book written within and on the backside seal with seven seals. I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, "Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof?" John sees God on the throne and he's holding this book that's sealed up with seven seals, and the angel says, "Who's worthy to take this book and break the seals?" On this book, and they they couldn't find anybody. John's in John's day when they uh, when they did a, a, a testament, it was sealed with seven seals, and nobody could open it except the heir of the one the book was written to. Well, can I tell you something this morning? Glory to God, my Savior is that the, He's the heir to what that book was written about. It's all about Him, and that's why they couldn't find. Anybody worthy? A book contains the title deed to all Jesus acquired. Everything he fulfilled by doing the Father's will, by coming to this old rugged, sinful, God-forsaken earth and dying on a cross for your sins and for mine. Glory to God. I'm happy about the fact that we don't have to run around through heaven looking for somebody that's worthy because he's the worthy Lamb of God. You think about this. 
Verse 3 talks about the search is conducted, no one worthy. Can I remind you just for a moment, if you will let me, of all who's already in heaven, we're in heaven. I can tell you right now, ain't none of us worthy. I said we're in heaven, ain't none of us worthy. Can I tell you somebody else who ain't worthy? Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they're all in heaven. They're all around this throne. They're all seeing everything that's going on. And there you've got Ezekiel and Isaiah. You've got all the Old Testament writers and all those that, uh, that, uh, that were part of the Old Testament. Daniel, you think about Daniel's prophecy. You go to the New Testament, you've got Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're all hanging out there. You've got the apostles. You've got, you've got uh, Paul the apostle and all the other ones. And they're all hanging out around there. But nobody, nobody is found worthy to open that book. And John's crying. You notice what it says there? It says he wept much. That means he was, he was in a state of constant weeping. And uh, it emphasizes, and what, this, what this all, he said, what does it emphasize, preacher? Our need of a Savior. We're unworthy. And uh, only Christ is worthy. Let me read you something. I'm going to read it pretty fast. It was written by uh, W.A. Criswell in his book on Revelation. It says, John t- John's tears represent the tears of all God's people through all the centuries. Those tears of the apostle John are the tears of Adam and Eve driven out of the Garden of Eden as they bowed over the first grave, as they watered the dust of the ground with their tears over the silent, still form of their son, Abel. Those are the tears of the children of Israel in bondage as they cried out to God in their affliction and slavery. They are the tears of God's elect through the centuries as they cried out unto heaven. They are the sobs and tears that have, (coughs) excuse me, that had been wrung from the heart and soul of God's people as they looked on their silent dead, as they stand beside their open graves, as they experience in the trials and sufferings of life heartaches and disappointments indescribable, such of him who holds it, the usurper, the interloper, the intruder, the alien, that stranger, that dragon, that serpent, that Satan devil. And it's, John says, and I wept much for the failure to find a redeemer, what did that mean? It meant that the earth, this earth is in its curse, is consigned forever to death. It meant that death, sin, damnation, and hell should reign forever and ever, and the sovereignty of God's earth should remain forever and ever in the hands of Satan. But can I tell you something? Verse 5 says, one of the elders said, Behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's the one that came. Listen, if he had never come and took that book and opened them seals, this earth would be cursed for all eternity because of the fact that they couldn't find anybody worthy to open it up. And you know when he opens the seals, everything begins to break loose. I'm glad the root of David went up and took that book and opened up those precious seals. In verses 5 through 7, there's a, word, there's a time of exaltation and worshiping the Lord. The elders console John. He tells him, there's no need to weep, John. You don't need to weep anymore because the line of the tribe of Judah, the offspring of David, has taken care of all of this for us. Jesus Christ the Lord is worthy. Reminds us a place that heaven will be a place of joy and peace. Can you imagine that? I'm going to a place where there'll be joy and peace. There'll be no more tears. Amen. There'll be no more death. Praise God for that right there. Amen. I'm telling you, it's uh, uh, death is something that strikes everybody's home. But I, I'm glad, thank God, that if we know Christ as Savior, that's just our entrance into that holy place called heaven. In Revelation 21, verse 4, John writes, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Listen, when I leave this place and go to heaven, I'll never shed another tear except one place 
and that's at the great white throne judgment. When I see people that I know, that I've talked to, that have rejected the Son of God, cast off into a devil's hell for all eternity into the lake of fire, and I see those that I never witnessed to that will be cast off, that God will require their blood on my hands according to the book of Ezekiel because I never shared the gospel with them. Can I tell you something? We are all going to stand for God one day with bloody hands because there's people that we have, have not talked to about Christ that we should talk to about the Lord Jesus Christ. Not a doubt in my mind. We need to tell everybody about the Savior. But there are some that we have neglected to tell. But I want you to know this. Verse number four tells us that sorrow will not come into heaven. Tears will not come into heaven because that's a perfect place. And the last part of verse number five is the announcement. Write these words are true. For these words are what? True and faithful. Amen. You know why they're true and faithful? Because God cannot lie. I, I, I think about the line of Judah. That's the Lord Jesus that came the first time. The root of David is the sovereign of the ages, had prevailed to open the book. He'll rule and reign as king of kings and lord of lords one day. Revelation chapter 19 tells us that. That, that ought to be exciting. <clears throat> That's when we're going to ride horses. How many of you don't like to ride horses? Well, glory to God, you're going to ride a white one when you leave heaven and come back with the Lord Jesus. And the greatest thing about that white horse, they are tame. You'll jump on that thing and it won't kick, but turn around and bite you, nothing. It will just flow with everybody else. I, I don't, I, you know, I love horses. I just don't love getting on them. I like my feet settled on the earth, something solid, you know what I'm saying? I've flown through the air too many times. John saw Jesus as a Savior, the Lamb slain in verse number 6. John the Baptist proclaimed Jesus as the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And, uh, and he died in our place. He took our place and made an atonement for our sin. The sovereign the lamb bears the marks of his death. The seven horns speaks of his omnipotent power. He is Lord of all. Can I tell you something? He is Lord of everything. He always has been. He always will be. And I thank God for that. Let me tell you something. The devil has no place trying to do anything above the Lord Jesus Christ or Almighty God. He can't do it. He tried in the temptation of Christ and he failed all three times. And then he just got mad and went away. I'm going to tell you something. One day he's going to get mad when he's thrown away. Amen. Nothing. We need to realize that seven spirits speaks of his omniscience, all knowing. He knows everything. Can I tell you something this morning? I, I want you to understand something. I've told you this before. Nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N-G, nothing is hidden from his eyes. He knows everything about you. Do you know that? Some of y'all sitting there thinking, saying, I wonder if he knows about this and he knows about that. Can I tell you something? He knows about this and he knows about that. Everything when he sees us, everything is naked before his eyes. I'm not being ugly. I'm just saying everything is wide open. Nothing escapes his sight. No, it don't matter what it was. You say, well, what about just a little? Just a little bit. He was talking about that too. Everything. He knows everything. Nothing escapes him. Every prayer. Think about this. The worship of the Lamb. Verses 8 through 14. The prayers of the redeemed of all ages. Think about the prayers through all generations, throughout the ages of time. That's what those angels are holding in them little vials, the prayers of the saints of God. And they're there to present him to him, the prayed for suffering of God's people to end, for Satan to be defeated. That's what I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to the day that sin is removed. 
no longer has anything to do, any bearing on me whatsoever, or you either, if you know the Lord your Savior. Just like the Lord taught us to pray, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And God provides everything that he says in that prayer for you and me. That's our Lord and that is our Savior, Jesus Christ. That time of worship. He hadn't forgotten and he hadn't ignored one prayer. Every prayer, I believe, that we have prayed he has entered the presence of God. 1 John 5, 14 says this, And this is the confidence that we have in him. Do you have, let me ask you. Do you have confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ this morning? Do you have enough confidence to say that when you go and pray, you know, a lot of times we'll pray and then we'll get up and we'll start complaining about what we just prayed about. That's a lack of confidence in God. When I come to the Lord, I've, been, I've done it too, just like the rest of you. So don't look at me with them self-righteous, pious, religious faces this morning, okay? We've all been in that place at some time, Amen. But I, I know that when I have the confidence that I have in God, when I come and ask him in prayer for something that I have a need of or somebody has a need of that I'm praying for, I believe with all my heart he will hear and he will answer that prayer, as 1 John says, according to his word and his will. That's how he answers prayer. Listen. We don't know how he does it. We don't understand when or why he does it. I, I just know, let me just say this. I know he does it. And I believe that he does it for each and every one of us. This confidence we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, notice what it says, he heareth us. Prayers for deliverance from evil will soon be answered in power. Verses 9 and 10, the hosts of heaven sing a new song. A new song for a heavenly choir. But a song that's as old as time. A song of the old, old story that never loses its splendor. A song of praise lifted to magnify the Lamb who is worthy. The song comes from the hearts of all whose faith has ended in sight. Can I, let me ask you a question. How, let me, and you be honest with me. I won't hold it against you, okay? How many of you cannot carry a tune in a bucket? You just can't sing. Oh, glory to God. We all have the bucket singers here one of these Sundays. I've never seen so many hands in my life. Y'all ought to come join the choir. Hey, I'll tell you what. Just open. The Bible says just open up your mouth wide and let it fly. That's basically what it says. Make a what kind of noise? Joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. <laughs> My younger brother sung between the keys. No, no, no such note whatsoever, but that's, that's where he sung, in between the white ones and the black ones. He, he couldn't sing a tune, and he'd tell you. I can tell you because I've stood beside him when he sung before. I thought it was a dying cow that had come to church and was... Going out. But think about this. Listen, all you that raise your hand just now, how many of you would like to sing in the choir? About three. How many say, I wish I could, but I can't? Well, now that's better. I've got a few more there. Can I tell you something? You're going to be one of them thousands of thousands of thousands of thousands. Singing in the heavenly choir. And can I tell you something? You'll definitely be able to carry a tune that time if you never carried one before in your entire life. We'll understand it, the songs. We'll understand as never before what the sacrifice on Calvary did for us. We'll, we will be completely aware that it was the blood of Christ that made the difference for you and for me when he died on that old rugged cross. All praising the Lord in unison. That's what I like. We're going we're gonna to sing in four-part harmony. Some of you probably don't know what that is, but that's okay. The angels can't sing the song we sing. All the beasts and, and, and all those that, 
elders and everything can't sing it. You say, well, preacher, what are they singing for? They're praising their creator. They don't have any idea what redemption is. They don't understand salvation because they never sinned and they never had to be saved because they were created perfect by Almighty God. So they're singing. Worthy is the Lamb. They understand all that. They, they were singing to glorify God. That's why they were singing. They're praising their Creator. And the ten thousands and all that bunch that made up that new choir, Miss Gail may be leading it. Who knows? I don't know. They got a piano, Miss Robin may be playing for all. Could you imagine playing for all that many people? Anyhow, we're all going to sing. And we're going to be singing worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor. I'm going to be singing that because he is the only one that was worthy to die on the cross for my sin. He's the only one they found in heaven that was all, all worthy to open up that book and open up the seven seals. Only the Lord Jesus Christ took our, took our sins board on the cross so that we would be judged. The redeemer will praise the worthy, praise the worthy Lamb. All the hosts of heaven will be singing, "Worthy is the Lamb." Philippians chapter two. Let me read this verse to you. A couple of them there. Philippians chapter two and verse nine. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Notice this. Of things in heaven, things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There's coming a day when every knee is going to, that's what the Bible says, and I believe the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to write that down, that every knee is going to bow before Almighty God one day. Every mouth is going to up and confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I believe that with all my heart. It'll be one time we can all shout loud enough that the whole world be able to hear us. The Lamb's in the midst of the throne. Go with me to Revelation 19. And one day the saved by grace, boy, I tell you what I'm looking forward to this one, 19. I, I'm looking forward to the marriage supper of the Lamb. You say, what, what are we going to be eating, preacher? I don't know. And I don't care. Whatever's on the table, we're going to eat. Can I tell you something? Whatever's on the table you're going to eat, you're going to clean your plate too. Y'all might as well go ahead and teach your kids to clean the plate because when they get to heaven, they're going to have to clean. There ain't going to be no leftovers. But I'm looking for the day when the bride, that's me and you, oh, glory to God, will meet the groom. We'll be married. Can you understand that? We're going to be a part of everything. We're going to have a marriage separate of the Lamb. We're all going to sit down. Oh, Harold Seitler used to say, we're going to sit down at a table spread from sky to sky. I don't know how big a table that's going to be. It's going to be a big one, though. I want to sit down next to Moses. While we're sitting there eating, whatever we're eating, I want to punch him. Hey, can I ask you a question? That come you hit that rock, you mad the second time instead of speaking to it, you slapped it again with that stick. How come you did that? You look back now and see what, what happened to you because of disobedience. You can look at me and say, well, how many times did you disobey? Now you just shut up and eat your supper. <laughs> you just enjoy what's on the table right now. Don't be... Don't be looking into my past. That ain't none of your business. I told my church all along, it ain't none of your business what I did before I got saved. And I said, it ain't none of yours either. He said, I ain't talking about it since you got, after, before you got saved. I'm talking about after you got saved. And I said, well, that's none, that's none of your business either. <laughs> Revelation 19, look at verse number five. 
a voice came out of the throne of saying, Gee, praise our God, all ye his servants and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the voice of many waters, as the voice of mighty thunderings. That's loud. Saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be, that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. And he said unto me, Right, blessed are they who, which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. I'm be wearing white linen one day. What do you think about that? Pure and clean. As a bride would wear for her bridegroom. Dressed up in perfection. My goosebumps going all down the back of my legs. What a day at the marriage supper. Let me tell you something. I made my preparation for that day. 50 plus years ago when I trusted Christ as my Savior. I've been preparing for it for a long time. I, I didn't know that I'd live this long. But I've enjoyed every minute of it. But I made my preparation. Nothing, nothing can take my reserved place away from the marriage supper of the Lamb because I'm eternally secure in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad that day, that night came when my wife wanted me to go to church before I went overseas. I went over there and sat down on about the fifth row Sixth row, I don't even remember. I just know it was in the middle. The invitation was given. And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart. I got up and went forward and got led to Christ and saved by the grace of God. I've been saved ever since. Can you believe that? Can you believe that God would allow me to be a part of his family for these 50 plus years as crazy as I was? As crazy as you are? Don't look at you... Y'all get them pious religious faces and start looking at me and I'm, I'm thinking, you ain't no better than I am. Amen. But one day, when it's all over, I'm going to see the king. I'm going to bow and worship him. We all, we all are. We're going to sing and rejoice at the marriage supper of the Lamb. For that day will come for us. When we are married to our bridegroom, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me ask you something this morning. Have you made that preparation? Can you ask yourself this question? Am I 100% sure if I died this moment right here in this church that I'd go to heaven? Are you sure of that? Or you might say, preacher, I'm not sure if I died right now, I'd go to heaven. I'd go to hell. There's only one or two places. Our destination to the one or the other is determined on what we do or do not do with the Lord Jesus Christ. We repent and accept him as our Savior, we're going to heaven. If we reject him as our Savior, we're going to hell. There's no in-between, there's nothing else. It's just you're either saved by grace or you're lost and going to hell, one of the two. I want to encourage you this morning. If you're not sure, if you say, Preacher, I'm just not sure. I, I want to encourage you to settle that in your heart today. I want to encourage you right where you're sitting to say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know if I died right now, I'd die and go to hell. But I repent of my sin. I ask you to forgive me of my sin and come into my heart and my life and save me right now. 
In Jesus' name, and I promise you this, the Bible says, for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our heads are bowed and our eyes are closed. Here's a simple invitation. If you're here this morning and you've never trusted Christ, you might even say, Preacher, I just prayed that prayer with you. Or maybe you haven't ever prayed that prayer. You've never trusted him. You say, Preacher, would you just pray for me? I don't want to go to hell. That's for sure. But can I tell you something? Your life is a vapor that appears for a moment and vanishes away. You have no promise of the rest of this day. You have no promise of the next five minutes. You have no promise of your next breath. If you inhaled and exhaled your breath and never took another one, you're going out into eternity. Where are you going? You better think about it. You better know in your heart that when you're going, you're going to heaven. Preacher, would you just pray for me? I, I just want you to slip your hand up. I just want to pray for you. God bless you. Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Somebody else? Yes, sir. Somebody else? Let me tell you something. This is, a, this is a time when we get right with God. If you're not saved, oh, my soul. What about Christians this morning? How many of you have come to realize that one day you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ? I don't know if that's where we'll see the blood on our hands of those that we refuse to talk to our friends our neighbors our husbands and wives and children that we know are lost and going to hell our kin folks whoever they are people that we work with that are not saved those that we just happen to run into that may not be saved and we've just neglected neglected to tell them about the Savior. And we work and live around these people all the time. And we know they're going to go to hell when they die. Say, preacher, would you pray for me? I, I want to be a better witness this year. I, I want to tell people about the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I don't want to see anybody die and go to hell that I know. Would you pray for me? I want you to slip your hands up all over this building. God bless your hearts. You can put them down. Those that raise their hand this morning, I, while every head's bowed and every eye's closed, I wonder if you'd just look at me for just a moment. Would you let us take a Bible and show you how to be saved? No Christ is your Savior. Would you come... Just come right now. They'll, they'll take a Bible. I'll have somebody to go with you. You're going to the back. You want to come? Okay. Well, if either wants to talk to us after church, I'll be here waiting. And I'll be glad to talk to you. I, I, I just beg you, don't, don't go out into eternity without Christ. Settle that up today with him. As we stand to our feet for prayer. Our Father, right now we pray. Pray for those that, every Christian that raised their hand this morning. God, help us all. I raised mine too. Help us. We need your power. We need your strength to tell people about Christ. We live in a day where people are antagonistic. They don't like anything to be told them about a Savior. 
God, we need that almighty Holy Ghost power on our lives so that we can open up our mouths and speak to them about Christ. And I pray for those this morning, raise their hand, Lord. I pray that they'll, uh, they'll come and talk with me today after the service. Or if they want to talk with somebody else, I'll be glad to help them with that. But Lord, I pray you'd have your perfect will and way in their lives right this moment. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I'll ask the, the deacons to come. Golly, Ned, look at all them munchkins coming in there. You see all them there, David? You don't want to look, do you? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Go ahead and read because I'm like, it's going to take me a minute to get down there. The Lord's table. The two elements are bread and juice. We do not use alcohol, strictly grape juice. Okay, so I want you to know that. But this is, the, is one of two ordinances that the Lord gave to us. His table and baptism are the only two ordinances of the church. And so today we participate in this ordinance in remembering what he has done for us. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 11, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. If any man hunger, let him eat at home that ye come not together unto condemnation. And the rest will I set in order when I come. Our Father, we thank you for the reading of the word of God, for the instructions that you have given to us on this precious ordinance of the church. And Lord, I pray now that as the elements are passed and as we partake of them, I just pray, God, that it'll be a time, as the Lord Jesus said, this do in remembrance. May we remember that body that was nailed to an old rugged cross. May we remember that precious blood that was shed for our sins. May we remember as the Lord Jesus asked us to. For it's in his precious name I pray. Amen and amen.
one second, get Dan Lane going back up. The Bible says when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. Brother Dean, would you bless the bread, please, sir? Our first prayer to the Father is first off to eat the unleavened bread. Yes. And then there we uh, start with what most preachers say is uh, help us to remember uh, our broken body and how it was broken. We eat the living bread. Yes. Amen. <coughs> Psalm ninety five says, O oh, come. Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand, are the deep places of the earth. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, and he made it. And his hands form the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God. and We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will fear, hear, the vo hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my work, 40 years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known my ways, unto whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord. Bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He's to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. Give unto the Lord, O ye kindreds of people. Give unto the Lord glory and strength. Give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering, come into his courts. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Fear before him all the earth. Say among the heathen that the Lord reigneth. 
The world also shall be established that it shall not be removed, be shall, but shall judge, he shall judge the people righteously. That's a song right there. The old, old story. The old rugged cross. After he had broken the bread, he said, Take, eat, this is my body. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Brian, would you bless the juice, please, sir? Mm. Psalm 21 says, The king shall joy in thy strength, O Lord, and in thy salvation. How greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire. 
hast not withholden the request of his lips, Selah. For thou preventest him with preventest him with the blessings of goodness. Thou settest a crown of pure gold on his head. He asked life of thee, and thou gavest it him. Even long, length of days forever and ever. His glory is great in thy salvation, honor, and majesty hast thou laid upon him. For thou hast made him most blessed forever. Thou hast made him exceeding, exceeding glad with thy countenance. Psalm 22 says, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me from the words of my roaring? O oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, and am not silent. But thou art holy, O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted, and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm, and no man, a reproach of men, and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out their lips, they shake their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou hast, thou didst make, didst make me know, make me hope. When I was upon my mother's breast, I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. For there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Basham have beset me round. They gape upon me with their mouths, and as a raving and roaring lion, I'm poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue cleaveth to, the, to my jaws. Thou hast brought me into the dust of the dust of death. For the dogs have compassed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare at me. That I part, they part my garment among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be thou not far, far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling, from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorn. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. It says, after the same manner, he also took the cup, and when he had up, uh, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me.
us stand together and be dismissed. The Bible says that when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. I don't think any of you go to the Mount of Olives this afternoon. <laughs> but they rejoiced in what they had, they had just done with the Lord Jesus Christ. Is Robin, you got something to... That's good. That sounds good. We'll sing the first verse. Would you be free from your burden of sin? Power in the blood.